Great power competition has come roaring back over the past decade. Geopolitics is back. At the same time, wealth and power have moved eastwards towards our part of the world. And China's growth has comprised the largest uh, element of that. There's a massive concentration of wealth in China. And that same period, which has coincided with Xi Jinping's period in power, has also seen China become much more aggressive in the waters to its east and south, in its relations with its neighbours, notably India, also Australia. But in truth, China has been at daggers drawn with many of its neighbours at different times over the past decade. And I would argue that the severity of China's behaviour has seen a few effects in our part of the world. First of all, other Asian countries seeking to step up and expand their freedom of movement and to do things, make new friends, do things in different ways, because none of us wants to live in, in China's shadow. Secondly, institutional developments. For example, the elevation of the Quad. I would say both the Quad and AUKUS were made in China, Minister. <laughs> And finally, connections between capable Asian countries like India and Australia getting stronger. So there's the context. Now let me ask you two questions about China, because I think China is at the heart of a lot of this strategic flux. First of all, let me ask you about relations between China and India. You told us at the inaugural session that we should listen, like Mr Modi, we should, the importance of listening and reflecting. I've listened during this conference, I heard the Indian Defence Secretary say that China was a bully. I, I, I heard you say, I think, uh, that um, the biggest opposer of UN Security Council reform is not a Western country, which I guess might possibly refer to China. Um, China, I think, is a preoccupation of yours. What is the settling point of the relationship between China and India? Is there a settling point? And secondly, let me ask you about the relationship between China and Russia. The Ukraine war has pushed China and Russia together. It seems to me there's a lot of confidence here in India that eventually they will pull apart again because they're different countries with different interests. But I wonder if there's some overconfidence there. Uh, Mr Putin is, is on his high horse at the moment, but I think in the long term he understands that Russia is the junior partner in that relationship. China's economy is closing on America's economy. Meanwhile, Russia is, is in danger of being overtaken by Australia's economy. Um, Michael, what if, let me know. finish. What okay. if the China-Russia relation, China relationship strengthens? What if it doesn't turn out in the way that India hopes? Um, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, you just introduced a thought in my head, which is people say that the Quad is directed against somebody. And it struck me that, yes, you know, all four of us have had problems with the UK. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, think, think about it. Uh, but uh, uh, three of us have actually kind of fought a war. Yes, yes. But uh, more seriously, uh, uh, where, you know, what would be the, uh, uh, you know, where would India-China finally find an find a equilibrium or a balance? It will, you know, it's, here, here's the problem. Uh, both of us are rising, uh, obviously at a different pace with different starting points. Uh, I think uh, uh, the Chinese started off earlier, much and much more, uh, uh, you know, much more intensively and robustly than we did. Uh, but uh, it's in the nature of things that, you know, at some stage everybody flattens out, so there'll be a period where they'll be flattening out and we'll be growing. Uh, uh, I'm not in denial of, uh, you know, what the numbers today uh, suggest, but uh, if one looks, for example, uh, at the Goldman Sachs uh, prediction, which is that We'll both really, uh, by about 2075, end up as $50 uh, trillion dollar economy plus, and will be the uh, two closest to each other. Now, the, the international relations uh, version of that issue would be, 
if both of us are moving vis-a-vis -vis each other and vis-a-vis -vis the world, how do we construct an equilibrium? That there will be occasions when one or the other would want uh, to change, you know, to, to do something to press home a particular advantage, uh, and the other will resist it. You know. uh, here's the immediate issue, which is, you know, from the 1980s, really, late 80s, uh, we had an understanding on the border, uh, precisely because it suited both of us. Uh, now, there was a departure after uh, almost, uh, after 30 years, uh, a departure on their side, in terms of how they behaved uh, on the border. And there's a pushback from our side. So I, I think management, you know, arriving at equilibriums, then maintaining those, refreshing those, is going to be the, one of the biggest challenges for, for both countries. It's not going to be easy. The bit which, you know, the, the mind games which will be played would be, you know, it's just between the two of us. There's nobody, the other 190 odd countries in the world don't exist in our relationship. That will be the mind game which will be played. I don't think we should play it. Because if there are other factors out there in the world which can be harnessed by me to get better terms on an equilibrium, why should I forego that right? So part of, uh, you know, uh, today, uh, uh, when I say think through your own solutions, is don't give another country, which is clearly a competitive country, a veto over our policy choices. And unfortunately, in the past, that has happened from time to time. So we should be confident enough to uh, leverage the international system to, to create the best uh, possible outcome. Your second issue, Russia-China. You know, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, you have people whose sets of policies bring the two together. <laughs> and then you say, you know, beware of them coming together. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I mean, I, I can see the reality out there. But I think it's very much in, uh, certainly in Indian national interest, but I would suggest actually in global interest, that when Russia, you know, what's happened today with Russia is essentially uh, a lot of doors uh, have been shut to Russia and the West. Okay, we know the reasons why. Russia is turning more to Asia or to, to parts of the world which are not West. Uh, now, I think uh, it makes sense to give Russia multiple options. If we, if we railroad Russia into a single option and say, you know, that's really bad because that's the outcome, uh, then you are making it a kind of a self-fulfilling uh, uh, prophecy. So uh, today I think uh, it's important for other countries, especially in Asia, to engage Russia, to, to remind Russia. And look, Russia, Russia is, a, uh, is, a, uh, you know, is a power with an enormous... Uh, tradition of statecraft. Such powers would never put themselves, uh, you know, into a single relationship of, uh, of a overwhelming nature. Mm -hmm. it, it would go against their grain. Stay with the Times of India for news breaks, analysis, interviews and events. We bring you stories from your neighbourhood and from across the globe as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the like button and press the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos.